In today's video, we're going to check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Someone please explain to me what's going on in Brazil right now. Apparently, encountering these entities is a common occurrence down there. As you can see in the video, there is a being made from light standing on this hill. You can see them moving around and everything in this video. A lot of people in Brazil think that these are some sort of angelic beings. Here's another one of one standing in the woods. While many people believe that these things are of heavenly nature, others think that they could be aliens or even some sort of interdimensional being that's beyond our comprehension. Whatever this thing is, angel, alien, interdimensional being, it's really weird. And these are not the only two times that these things have been captured on camera. There's a lot. Just look it up. Look up light beings in Brazil. What do you guys think these are? And why are they attracted to Brazil? Let me know your thoughts on this one. It's weird. Very interesting. I don't know if any of those are real or fake. I don't know exactly because I've never heard of light beings and I've never seen one on video before like this. This is my first time ever seeing anything like this. It's pretty neat. What do you guys think it is? Do you think it's just a trick of the camera lens or do you think that it's people playing a hoax or do you think that maybe it's some kind of entity of some sort? Nonetheless, those are extremely bright individuals if it's real. I, I don't know what they have going on that's making them so flashy, but if it's real, that's got to be some intense light. Sorry, they just found what? Under the ice. Now I'm done. Why is every video I make about Antarctica now? No. <laughs> Right, so we all know Antarctica, I mean I make probably a video on it every flipping week now. But yeah, this is pretty crazy. This time, it's not about aliens, this is about real life stuff, so it should be alright. So basically, as I'm sure you're aware, there are a lot of research teams in Antarctica, people go out there to investigate the species, the sea life, see obviously how quickly the ice is all melting and stuff like that. And a team about a year ago went there to basically investigate under the ice. Basically what this crew were doing was finding out more about all the species that are in Antarctica, and of course, there's not that many, right? Well until now. So what they did is drilled into the ice and put this tiny, tiny little camera right down the hole. Do you want to know how deep this went? 18 miles! And what they found under there was actually pretty insane. They found hundreds, if not thousands of unknown species which have never ever been seen before by anyone on Earth. Now of course the camera which went down there is like 5 millimeters. it's flipping tiny so you can't really see as much as you'd like to. But there was tons of things swimming and crashing into this camera the whole time it was recording and scientists even said they found an entire ecosystem literally 18 miles under the ice. Now since the last time we spoke about this they have reported over 1000 different types of species or sea life under there, some of which being different types of sea cucumbers, sea stars, and various other molecules, part of the snail or slug family, which is, you know, pretty cool. But of course, the researchers over there are still looking into things and are going to find more and more things every time they look below the ice. So as always, hit that follow button, and I'll keep you updated. Man, I would really like to see what's under the ice a little bit more than what they've shown here. I'm curious. I'm sure there's other parts out there that are much deeper than 18 miles down that have a lot more going on for it. I really enjoy this type of stuff because who knows what's really living down there. Like, there's got to be some pretty crazy stuff. And the stuff that's frozen in ice, that's a whole nother world on its own that I would like to get to explore. For some reason, this year it's all about UFOs and Antarctica and the eclipse until the eclipse is over. It makes me wonder, what's the next theory going to be in the conspiracy realm? Free energy. And this guy, his name's Maxwell Chikambutsu from Zimbabwe. He has created a generator that does not use any power source. So this generator basically creates free energy using frequencies from the atmosphere. This one generator can like power like 300 homes. These two scientist guys went out there to test it and stuff and they're like, yeah, it's legit. And they're like, how did you know how to build this? He says that when he sleeps, he gets revelations from visions from God of how to create these things. He says, this is how he told me to make it. But this dude has a target on his back. So he's been in prison in Zimbabwe multiple times. You're too know. smart. He came to the U.S. at one point and he was poisoned <gasps> and almost died. He cannot get any of his patents patented because if it defies physics, it cannot be patented. Imagine if everything goes black in the world and that's the only type of energy source that we can like holster. If it's coming from God, then that's the only thing that's going to help. That's also this. a thing that like AI couldn't affect. No, you know? definitely not. I 
really hate that stupid rule if it defies physics it's completely denied just because it defies physics does not mean that it should not be something people are using because it could be great i i just that just drives me nuts i'll have to look this individual up a little bit more and see what all he's got going on because i'm curious about the machine that he's made hey if you haven't done so already go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel i only ask once per video and i make a video like this almost every day i'm fairly satisfied where the graph is sitting but for those that know the graph Thank you so much for being subscribed and watching. I would like to start doing something new on this channel as far as interacting with the audience that watches my videos. Maybe for the ones that are watching this mid-roll, you can help me flesh out this concept because I think this would be a really fun idea. I'm thinking about starting this thing called Questions for DK. And what that means exactly is when you write a comment and it's a question to me personally, whether you want to know what my opinions are on a specific conspiracy theory or what my personal life is like, unless it's too personal, I won't answer those. You would start a comment off with question for DK and then fill out the rest of the comment with whatever you want to ask. Again, this is all just a thought process right now. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because it's something that you could help flesh the system out a little bit better and help me come up with a better idea for this concept, because I think it would be really fun. But my current concept is question for DK, then you write the comment, whatever the question is. And then during my mid rolls on my videos like this one currently, I'll go through a couple of these comments and answer the questions to them. I think that would be really fun. Let me know what you guys think of this concept. Let me know if there's any way to improve this concept because it does sound really fun and I would be very pleased to do so if any of you guys are interested. Just remember, I would like it to be formulated around saying question for DK or something in the comments because YouTube has a search function that allows me to search up comments based on certain words. So it would be easy to search those specific comments up if they start with question for DK or whatever sounds good. Just let me know what sounds good so that we can all work on the same page. They have just discovered a giant metal ball in the moon. And just you wait until you find out what it actually is. So recently there's been lots of emerging stories and breaking news all around the world and space. Discoveries on other planets, potential alien life, whether you believe it or not, I don't know, but apparently. Crazy photos captured by the James Webb Telescope. And one of the main bits of news was that Earth's core is actually a metal ball, which had people spiralling on the internet saying, hang on a minute, I remember learning that in school anyway, which yeah, I kind of do. And other people saying, no, it's lava. Is it? No. So scientists have discovered a giant metal structure up on the moon and they are literally right now trying to figure out what it actually is. Now no, it's probably not an alien space base and it's more likely that whatever this metal thing is occurred naturally. How? I don't have a flipping clue. Now one of the craziest bits about this is that even though we've been to the moon multiple times, there is still stuff up there that surprises us that we would never have even seen before or thought about. Now if you look at this diagram, it shows the area where the metal is. Like, it's pretty damn big. Now it's buried beneath the moon's surface on the South Pole and as I say again, it is flipping huge. Now this structure weighs in more than 2.18 billion tons and measures in more than 300 kilometers in depth. Now the US based scientists who discovered this said that it is an anomaly, so weird. Now they're saying that it could be left over from an asteroid or oxides from the crystallization of a magma ocean. And yeah, sounds pretty cool. Now the theory seems to suggest that an asteroid struck the crater, literally like combining with the moon because it was that damn big. Now just to put it into comparison, one of the scientists said imagine taking the whole island of Hawaii, covering it in metal and burying it five times on the moon. That is how big it is. But yeah, I don't know what's going on. Is it some kind of alien sniper tower looking down on Earth or is it just metal that smashed into the planet? Make sure you hit that follow button and I'll keep you updated. You know, some people say that the moon was built by some other entities. Maybe we're just now starting to find that out scientifically and not just through scriptures and things like that. I'm wondering, what could it be? Is it just a melted asteroid fused in with the moon? Or is it something else that could advance our own technologies? I'm very curious about this discovery. This guy, he claims he saw, I don't even know what it is, but look, look just watch this video. This has 3.8 million views right now. You know how you can tell someone's walking behind you? I look back, and he's just fucking looking at me. He stops when I stop. So I walk forward a little bit. 
you know, I keep walking like that. And I said, fuck this shit, man. I turn around and go, what? What's your fucking problem? I swear to God, in my mother's grave, this guy's eyes was jet fucking black. Jet fucking black. I just sit there smi smiling like that, man. I fucking turned around. Fucking, I fucking ran. I said, fuck this shit, dude. Fuck this shit. I come home. I'm sitting out there where my street is. Like that, that fucking corner right there, man. I stopped saying that motherfucker was standing right fucking there, dude. Come in here, get my gun, look out again. He's gone. That dude was not fucking human. Yo, okay, there's more. Yeah, okay. So this is just the first one that went viral. Yeah, yeah. Damn, this guy has videos on videos on videos of crazy shit happening to him. Yeah. I'm gonna play two of them for you. Okay, okay. This is way too much. So, I was looking at the comments, fam. Comments were saying, those people are the fallen. That's what they call them, the fallen angels. That would be pretty freaky for sure. I've never been put in a situation quite like that, but I am fairly, not necessarily bold, but I'm just an extremely curious person by nature. It'll probably be the end of me one day. Uh, if I seen someone that was following me and I looked back and they had jet black eyes, I would one think that they were wearing like special contacts or they were just someone messing around with me. But I would have to approach them at that point, ask them why are they following me and why are their eyes just pitch black? Because that stuff interests me. I'm a very curious person, you know, as they say, a curiosity killed the cat, but the satisfaction brought him back. And I am a curious cat when it comes to that type of stuff. But what do you guys think? Do you think that it's actually people out there that are considered fallen angels and they are just for some reason following certain individuals? Or do you think that maybe there's just someone playing around with this individual? Or do you think maybe just blah? Or do you think that it was just someone messing around with this individual? Or do you think this individual is just coming up with the story just to get views? Let me know in the comments because there's a lot of ways that this could go. I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> it's massive. We're a walking universal library. We are the way for the universe to figure out and explore the third dimension and understand what it's like to be and live in the third dimension as every individual living thing. And we're all connected through this quantum entanglement. Every single, every single thing that exists is all connected, still connected. Space is an illusion. Distance is an illusion. Separation is all an illusion. What do you mean it's an illusion? We appear to be sitting in two separate chairs with a space in between us. Mm -hmm. But we're all atoms on an energetic grid that's connected and has always been connected. So the space in between us appears to be a distance. But if you go on the quantum level, you discover that we're both local. We're still in the same position, which is the original position. This entire universe is made up of a complete holography. We're living in a fractal holographic matrix, a matrix of light. And it doesn't take away from there being a creator because what I'm telling you about is the method used of this to make this creation. The method is a fractal holographic matrix, a matrix of light. Quantum physicists will tell you that a human being exists both as a wave of light and also solid matter. And they've got the first image of a wave converting into solid matter on a, on a special type of camera. This is in physics.org. So in wave particle duality, they discovered that everything in the entire universe exists first as waves of light until a conscious observer interacts with it and then it collapses. This is hard to wrap your mind around, but imagine this. We're sitting here. Your house, it exists as a wave of potentials, not your house. It's a wave of light. Now, the construction technique of the stacking of those atoms that built your house has a specific resonant frequency. So no matter who looks at it, it always collapses into the same exact shape. But if nobody's looking, it's just a wave of potentials. Until you see it, when you bend the corner, it collapses back into a solid structure. This is now well-known, proven science due to the double slit experiment. If you look that up, you'll find out they took a microscopic box. They put a little gun inside that can shoot individual electrons through slits inside the box to, sit, to hit the back wall. So the two slits here, and they want these particles to hit the back wall to see if it was going to make a digital imprint on the back wall. Well, when they did this, when they looked, it was waves. So they said, wait a minute, how can there be a wave pattern on the back wall? We shot individual single electrons through the slits. This should be dot, 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 dot. I said, we got to look at this and see what's going on. So they put a camera in the box to see what was happening. When they looked, 
just looking, all of a sudden the electron said, oh, you're looking at me? Okay, I'm going to go back to being solid matter now, dot, 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 dot. Took the camera away, waves. Put the camera back, dot, 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 dot. Oh, electrons are conscious. They are, they are aware that they're being observed. And electrons orbit every atom in the universe, which means every atom is conscious. That means you think that you're sitting in a chair that's just made by man. We didn't make this chair. We stacked atoms. We stacked conscious atoms in a format that allowed us to sit on them. Everything is conscious. This chair is conscious. This suit is conscious. Everything is conscious because they're all made of atoms. And all we are ourselves are a stack of conscious atoms observing ourselves right now. You see? And so it gets really deep, man. It, I, mean, I, can go, I can go deeper and deeper, but it's pretty powerful stuff. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> so what, the, the benefit of knowing this, imagine teaching your kids that everything that exists is conscious. A rock, a blade of grass, your clothing, even your book bag is aware. It's conscious. Imagine teaching them how to respect conscious things, the level of respect they will have for their personal items, their bike, their clothing, their book bag. Their, you know, their schoolwork, understanding and knowing that everything that they interact with, everything they touch or see has a level of conscience imbued into it. Now you're training your kid to be, a, a, you know, a super conscious person that understands, like, treat everything that exists, no matter whether we think man made it or it's natural, with respect and dignity. That's the depth of understanding that people need to get to. And when we can get to that level of understanding. Whew, wow. <laughs> So if we're all, sta if we're all, I mean, in which we are, I do understand. If we're all s stacked atoms, yeah. stacked conscious atoms, yeah. <clears throat> what holds us together? Electromagnetic forces. That's what holds us together. You don't touch anything. So I may look like I'm touching this chair right now, right? I'm not actually touching the chair. You actually never touch anything. The repulsion of the electromagnetic frequency orbiting the electrons and atoms in my hand are repelling the ones inside the chair, creating a repulsive force, not allowing my hand to pass through the chair. Because honestly, atoms are 99.999% empty space. And so what that means is atoms are mostly empty. There's nothing there. The only thing we have is these electromagnetic fields that give us the illusion of separation and, and solidity. And so if I can obtain the atomic frequency of the vibration of the atoms in this chair, and make my hand match that frequency, I would pass my hand right through the chair like it didn't even exist. So, you, you, so there's probably people, beings, maybe on other planets or maybe even here now, that have learned this technique. We're going to match the frequency of this wall and just walk right through. Imagine a military puts on a special suit that can match the frequency of a solid, solid concrete wall and walk right through the wall. It's going to look like magic, but it's just technology. You see, they understand how to match frequencies. If I took all 8 billion people on Earth and took away the empty space in their atoms, I can fit every human being into one sugar cube. There's nothing here. <laughs> We're not even here. That's how it's really our higher selves. See, our consciousness doesn't exist. It's not created by the brain, I should say. It exists, but it's not created by the brain. It exists in a higher dimension. It doesn't it doesn't. It's here in the third dimension now because it's inhabiting this avatar body, but it's coming in on a screen, on a beam of light, on, a, on an invisible beam. It's 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 we're, we're inhabiting it's inhabiting this avatar body. If you understand that your body doesn't create the consciousness, it downloads it. And what downloads it into your body? You have your neural correlates of consciousness, which are three giant neurons that wrap around the inside of the skull like a giant crown of thorns. Sound familiar? Everyone walks around with a crown of thorns in their head right now. And then you have your neocortex in the front, which is for spatial and higher reasoning. And then you have your magnetite crystals. Uh, and so those three things together harness and hold in the frequency that is you, that is saying, you know, this is who I am. And it allows you to inhabit temporally, time, temporally, this avatar body until this avatar body gives out and ceases to operate and exist because of entropy and releases that spirit energy back into the source where it will then be recycled once again somewhere else. And so this, um, the understanding of this is, is just so powerful because you got to understand that you are already eternal. We're already eternal beings. We're, 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 when you talk to yourself, you're talking to your higher self from a higher dimension. You're speaking to yourself in another realm. 
We are all supernatural, eternal beings. A lot of people are trying to fight to become eternal, but we already are eternal. We've already been here for eons and eons. There could be people that you know that look like kids that are ancient. And there also can be people that are older people that are newborn babies spiritually. Could be their first time arriving here in this energy format. You're talking about old souls. Old souls, right. Exactly. Old souls. There could be a kid that could be ancient, could be eons old. And there could be a, a lady that could be 70 that could be brand new. First cycle here. First time, first time operating in this energy, in this spiritual energy, in this dimension. Uh, you know, so it's just, it's a lot to grasp. I know I threw a lot at, a lot at you at once, but <laughs> it's such a huge story. I think it's really amazing. For me, it makes me feel more incredible. I feel like I'm part of something super massive and big. I don't think it makes me feel small at all. I feel like because everything is connected, that everything is me and everything is you. If I'm talking to you. I'm really talking to myself. There's only one consciousness that exists. Well, that, that was actually a question I wanted yeah. to ask you. Do you think that we share consciousness? Absolutely. I really enjoy the discussion of everything is an atom because in a sense, I definitely believe that. I don't know if I necessarily believe that everything is conscious, but I do believe that everything could potentially be an atom, but that does not mean that an atom is necessarily a conscious thing. There could be different forms of atoms that we don't know about. There could be certain forms that make atoms in humans compared to an atom that makes like this desk. There's probably different types of atom elements that we just have no comprehension of because we can't get down to that microscopic level. Do I believe that things are made out of atoms? 100%. I definitely do think that things are made out of atoms. And I do believe that if you have the right frequency to those atoms, like Billy Carson said, I'm sure you could just pass right through it if you had that same vibration. I like this theory a lot. I just, again, don't necessarily believe that everything is conscious because I don't know if atoms work that way. None of us truly do. But really good discussion. I really enjoy this topic. What do you guys think about this topic? Do you believe that everything is an atom? Do you believe that all atoms are conscious? Do you think that we are all one collective conscious? Let me know in the comments because I really enjoy this discussion. Okay, we got to put our tinfoil hat back on for this one, y'all. This is weird. So I come across this post on my Twitter. Um, Can someone please tell me what the F is going on in the background? Okay, photo number one. Boom. Look in the background. Get your full. Shit's getting weird. Photo number two. It's a little weirder. Hold on, let's zoom in. Mmm. This is weirder. Like, what's happening here? So I'm like, this is no way that this is real. I'm going to let me go to her page myself so that I can see if this is even real. Well, I'll be doggone. It's really on her page, March 16th. Y'all see that right there? And I'm zooming in myself so that y'all can see, like, this is a real photo on her page. Look at that one. What in the reptilian hell is going on? What? Need somebody to explain to me like I'm three years old why America's Got Talent has shapeshifters in the audience. And if these aren't shapeshifters, then what the hell is it? And why would someone, especially a host of America's Got Talent, be editing faces in the background of her photos? This is not April Fool's. This was posted on March 16th. It's on her page right now. Somebody tell me. Because for those of you who are so good at refuting conspiracies, Give me an answer for this in the comments. Thank you. That's pretty terrifying looking. It, it makes me wonder if maybe this individual on American Idol not only messed with these people's faces to keep them from filing a lawsuit against them because they had their picture taken un unannounced, but then again, they shouldn't be on American Idol if that's the case because there's cameras pointing at the whole crowd all the time. So it makes me wonder if these aren't shapeshifters that we just get to catch on camera, kind of like demon face syndrome. Maybe this individual edited her photos to make herself look slimmer or did color correction, things like that. You know how it can really alter an image around the person that they're editing the photo of? That could be the effect going on. Maybe she was just doing some smudging to make her skin look better. 
and next thing you know everyone's face is distorted what do you guys think about this do you think that there's some kind of foolery going on with the camera or do you think there's actual shapeshifters out there because some of those people look extremely disturbed y'all they done did it now you couldn't make this up if you wanted to this story gets better and better let's pay attention to this date february 29th the Nikon, Coolpix P1000, and the P900 are being discontinued, okay, on February 29th. But why would they be discontinued? Maybe because they just signed a deal with NASA. NASA and Nikon recently signed a Space Act Agreement, but that outlines how they will work together to develop a handheld camera that can operate in the harsh lunar environment for use, beginning with Artemis 3. Hmm, Artemis 3, NASA, hmm. Well, what is Artemis 3? Artemis 3 is planning to be the first crewed moon landing mission of the Artemis program and the first crewed flight of the Starship Lander. That is why they discontinued the P900 and the P1000 Nikon cameras because they just signed a deal with NASA on the same day. And for everybody who comes on here and says, oh, well, are they going to discontinue telescopes too? How? How do you have to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to connect technology to a telescope so you can see that far? However, with the P1000 and 900 camera, you can instantly take pictures and videos flawlessly and post them on TikTok, therefore waking up everybody to the truth of Flat Earth. Enjoy. Thanks. I'm really upset about the Nikon P1000 because I did not know about this camera's existence until mid-March of this year because a lot of people were telling me about it because I want a telescope or a camera so I can get super close shots of the moon and things that I see flying around in, in the sky. They are discontinued. You cannot find one of these Nikon P1000s unless you get it third party and they want a lot of money for these cameras they want like two to three plus thousand dollars for one of these cameras back when they first came out they were like eight to seven hundred bucks so it's really crazy that they did that but they really made a great camera and decided that it was probably too good and too many truths were being revealed because you could literally zoom up into the moon and see each individual crater extremely close up and it's pretty awesome i would love to get my hands on one of these cameras because from what i've seen online they are really good cameras and I might still get one. I just got to find one at a reasonable price and not over $2,000 because that's just, that's kind of crazy to me. They found a signal. Now, first of all, they found a planet buzzing with RF energy. Imagine you had a transistor radio on the moon and you were listening to the Earth. There would be thousands of radio stations and TV and military and Wi-Fi and phone networks. It would be very difficult to resolve anything. All that you would know is that the Earth is very technologically based. But using this wide field global network, my source tells me they've resolved some signals. He's telling me that they found discernible, unique information encoded in the global ET signal. What is it, says I, decoding what they have found? is a big part of this project. What he was prepared to say is their pictures, their data. What exactly alien ET pictures would look like is really fascinating. When will they reveal what they found? I don't know. I would have to really hear the signal. I would have to be directed by a more genuine source because I've never heard of this before. But I'm very interested if that's the case because who knows what kind of signal extraterrestrials would send. It's got to be extremely complex. The way they communicate has to be like extreme or at least that's what i think maybe they are the same as us and they can just send out signals just like we can and we can understand it because they've somehow adapted this language that that we can comprehend as well fairly easily but I kind of doubt it. If there's extraterrestrials out there, they probably have not a single clue what we're talking about and we would not know what they are talking about. Not to say that they probably wouldn't have technology that would help 
figure out what we are talking about way faster than what we have to figure out what they are talking about. But nonetheless, this is interesting. I just don't know if I necessarily believe it. The following video was captured by a witness in a village in Azerbaijan. The witness records what looks like some sort of explosion on their mountain. But it's not just the explosion that has everybody's attention, but the sound that's coming from it. It almost sounds like they woke something up. Take a look at this footage, listen to it, and tell me what you think. I'm pretty sure that that's a fake audio clip. Are you okay there? Yes, I'm You have a, a lovely daughter. Don't you think you could dress her in something other than pink? What do you mean? Well, you see, pink is a girly color. Yeah, she's a girl. Yes, she's a girl, but she wants to grow up to be a, a, a woman. With Sorry, what? A woman. A brave, strong woman. Okay, yeah. And you should dress her, if possible, in brave, strong colours. I mean, there are lovely colours, aren't there? Like purple and red and orange and bright green. But pink is wishy-washy and it may mark her for life. In well, what do you mean mark her for life? She's two. Be dressed in something gender neutral so that she can make up her mind whether she wants to be a boy or a girl. Sorry, wear... what? She's two? Oh, yeah, why exactly. Why it's amazing the effect that early years has on us, and dressing her mainly in pink may leave an indelible mark on her. I want her to be have to be grown up, to be brave, and take take decisions in her own hands and make her own mind up about things. I think you've lost it. Do you? The, all right, cool. The thing is, yeah, Peter Pettibury, if you think yeah, she should. If you've got your own views, that's fine. Okay, yeah. But I think that you should keep your views to yourself. I mean, I'm not one that normally gets involved with the gender exclusivity of someone wearing clothes or things like that. What I would be worried about is some random individual approaching my car and I just roll my child's window down so that they can willy-nilly talk to me about what my child's wearing. That's kind of alarming to me. I don't know, uh, a little girl wearing pink is fine. I, I don't think that that would alter their mind necessarily to always want to wear pink. It might have some sort of influence, but it's not going to determine whether or not they are strong, confident individuals, whether they wear pink, blue, black, yellow, or white. It's not going to alter their mindset unless their guardian alters their mindset with input. What this lady is talking about could potentially alter this child's mindset in a different manner because now the kid's aware of, oh, well, maybe I can think for myself, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but to say clothes are going to alter a child's decisions and confidence and things like that is not as effective as actually talking about that stuff in front of the child. I, I don't know. I don't necessarily disagree with what the lady's saying, but I do not agree how this was handled if that makes any sense. Nonetheless, so if my daughter wants to wear pink, they can wear pink. If they want to wear black, they can wear black. I don't really have a care about what they wear as long as it's decent. What do you guys think about this? This can be a controversial topic for sure. Oh, it's getting lower. This is not good. <laughs> Legit, to move forward, I have to dig the rocks out. Oh my god. If I want to stand my head up, I can't. It just goes underwater. I feel like I'm gonna get stuck. So the reason I kept pushing is I thought it was gonna get wider, but as I'm getting closer, I realize it's an illusion. The water was just so calm and still above me that it was reflecting the ceiling off, and it just looked like a way bigger space. 
But it's continuing to narrow down. If it floods at all, I'm done for. So I'm going to attempt to run back around. Oh my god. I think I'm stuck. <laughs> this is not a joke. <clears throat> and that is how you raise my anxiety. I could not do that for no amount of money in the world. I'm a pretty large guy. I would get stuck really fast and probably end up panicking. Not the type of individual to take on these kind of explorations. But I enjoy this content a lot. This is probably some of my more favorite type of content, if I'm being real with you guys. I really enjoy this, but I could never do it. It just drives up my anxiety so much. But I enjoy it nonetheless to watch. It's very entertaining. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you were interested in any of the clips that we watched, link is in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.